Great, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Casey, for coming to talk to these humble people. They are so dear to my heart. And uh, yeah, but thank you so much for accepting the invitation. So go ahead, you know, introduce yourself. They are going to ask you questions, at, you know, when you're done and all of that. So yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Prince. I call him Prince. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the other name, but I know it's Prince. <laughs> it's a Prince to me. So I just want to welcome each and every one of us uh, here this morning. Um, and I'm going to, you know, give a little bit of a background uh, for myself and also to encourage folks um, regarding this journey that you're about to embark. It's uh, something worthwhile. Um, when I had the opportunity, I didn't look back. Like, I took it up almost immediately. Now, uh, having said that, I started off when I came to Canada, right? I started off as, a, you know, working like any other job that people know, you know, warehouse this, uh, PSW that, and all the rest of them, <laughs> right? But then uh, the opportunity came and I decided, no, this is what I want to do. And um, uh, for uh, let me just let because most of the time what people do ask is okay what if I don't have a tech background and stuff like that how do I go about this and that <laughs> that shouldn't be your worry because the truth of the matter is that whatever you put your mind into doing you just definitely will achieve that right uh, in my university uh, undergraduate uh, studies I have I studied sociology and anthropology you can imagine right so uh, my first career was actually in sales and marketing so it has nothing to do with tech so now. Having said that, uh, we started the journey and like I put everything I have into it, you know, my concentration, make sure that I follow through in uh, whatever that is being taught in the class then, right? Um, make sure I do my homeworks, you know, uh, also on my own personal time, do my studies and all what me, uh, just to get by, get in touch with folks, especially Prof here that you can see, right? And I can still remember even uh, when I started my job, I still, you know, go back to him and say, see, I'm having this challenge. Can you, you know, help us? And he gave me a whole lot of, uh, you know, uh, supporting documents, <laughs> I would say. So I I would say that you are in good hands, right? And that's one thing I know that uh, Prof is someone that delivers uh, his, um, uh, his teaching in a way that, it simplifies it, makes it understandable, especially for folks that are just, you know, coming into the folk, right? It, because one thing is for you to know something and the other thing is for you to know how to deliver it in a very simple manner for somebody to understand it. And that's what you're getting, you know, uh, when you are here. And there's also one thing I want us to understand, right? Don't make it look so abstract, right? try as much as possible to relate it to what your experiences are in life, especially the everyday life that we are embarking on. You have your phones, you see apps on your phone and stuff like that. Now know that these are the foundation, how these things come to be, right? So whenever you are going through classes, just relate it to your current experiences with, say, technology, with apps, with websites and stuff like that. That way you will be able to start May, you know, having a mastery over how these things work, the interface between these you know, back-end configurations and the front-end that you are seeing on your phone and all the rest of them. And uh, one other thing that I will also like encourage us to do, uh, I've tried to help uh, folks that are referred to do this course to do that a couple of times is in, one, in more than one way, right, try as much as possible to make our time to visit folks that are already in the system just to see how the day-to-day -day work is all about, it's, it's like, right? That will demystify the abstract nature of it to us, right? I did that, right, and also help some folks, you know, I would tell them, come to my house, so that's so dead, right? They will sit down, I will be on a call, I'll be uh, in a sprint meeting and stuff like that. I'll show them what my you know sprint planning uh, task is for the sprint, which normally lasts for two weeks, and what are what are my uh, backlogs. I will say answer these questions. Maybe when uh, folks answer questions, right? 
But what am I trying to say here? Is not is not too much of a concept for us to grasp. It's something that is natural once you get into it, right? Take for instance when uh, I was listening to the lady that talked about her interview, right? It's simple. See it as just um, something that you are into. When she talks about the sprint, like I said, sprint lasts for two weeks, right? You don't know about, okay, how do you go about it? Some organizations differ from any other organization. In my organization, we have a meeting. We have our standard meeting every other day. Some organizations might have it like twice a week or once a week, it depends, right? And then know what are the things that you are expected to do. <clears throat> hmm. What happened? Network. Can you imagine that? Uh, this is a uh, strange one. Okay, hopefully. Uh, like I yeah. it's okay, yeah. right. no problem. Thank you. So, like I said, um, is is not uh, something that is too uh, abstract. It's not something. It's something that you can relate with, right? And more importantly, questions. You should ask questions at every particular point in time. If you don't understand something, ask. If you don't know how that applies, ask. Right? Is uh, if asking questions is part of the job. It's also part of the training itself. In the job, in the job itself, you ask a lot of questions, right? And that's the essence of the meetings, right? You go into the meetings and they are asking you to do this, and you are asking, no, asking, why must I do it like this? What is the intention? What is the end point if I have to do it like this and stuff like that? So you you must cultivate the attitude of asking questions, you know, where something is not very clear, especially okay. Take for instance, somebody creates a ticket for you, right? And uh, it's very ambiguous, right? You have to ask questions, right, to get the specificity. Remember that at the end of the day, whatever you are doing is going to impact on the front end, meaning the end users at the end of the day, right? Because whatever you move out from pro uh, development onto production, at the end of the day, the intention is for you to get something better and the best that you can for the end users, right? So if you don't get it right from the beginning, from the basics, you will not get it, uh, you know, working perfectly well at the end of the day. So that's the essence. Now, also, after this training, <laughs> don't call yourself or don't see yourself as a novice to it. Now, why do I say that? I remember when I started off, of course, my training was on basically mostly on AWS, but right now I'm working on the good side of things, right? But when I started my work, when I started my job, I became a leader, a, a team lead in my own side, right? So, so it's not, it's not a, like I said, don't see yourself as a novice, you're not a novice, right? Whatever you are learning here is, is a complete package. Believe me, at the end of this course, you even know better than people that are already working. You know why I said that? Because most folks that are working are doing some routine job, right? Maybe in an organization, you are just, you are just, you know, dealing with uh, probably Kubernetes. Yep. So your whole attention is on Kubernetes, everything Kubernetes. Okay, so how about platform development? How about building the infrastructure itself? Say like a, an AWS uh, account, we call it account in AWS, I guess. I mean, in GCP, we call it a, a GCP project, right? How about building the project? How about building the resources like the VPC, the VPC SC, the, the 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 Kubernetes cluster itself, right? Because you might find out that what you are doing is just to make sure you are monitoring this Kubernetes cluster that okay something is not going wrong and stuff like that. So it handicaps you, right? So you find out that most folks in an organization are already handicapped. They are doing some part of the whole complex DevOps job. Whereas you are coming now, you have a variety of you know options you have knowledge about ansible you have knowledge about uh, uh sonar cube about uh app dynamics about prometheus about you have a full package and that's why when you go for interview and they'll be like oh my god we have this person here you understand because you are the full package so i want you to see yourself as that right give yeah. it your all and make sure that at the end of the day you are my the best that you can be you are in the best hand i can guarantee you that thank you very much
Okay, yeah, you know, uh, just to add to what, you know, uh, Kess is saying, you know, I work with HP, and so I've just mentioned two companies I work with, uh, and <clears throat> for the time I worked, that I, for all of my time that I'm working there, I've been focused only on Terracom and monitoring, as in they have diverse teams and what, so if they need infrastructure for this, say, oh, Elvis, get that, get done with that, right? All of that, and then we're monitoring. So, and even at the level of Terraform as well, it is, it's a teamwork. No one person just goes ahead and just provision, you know, resources. No, you you do your part, other person comes in and do his part. So, it's, so why I say this is very true, you can become what, you can become confined to routines. And that's what happens in the company environment. Right, so like what you say, I just want to add the point that you know what those who are going out to the market, after the point you are, you are more equipped, you are up to date as well. You know what I mean? Because I look at something, it's possible that the Kubernetes version that that probably the team is using at the moment, or maybe it's no, is one point two four. But what you have already at you you are what you are already at level of one point two nine, as what I saw yesterday. Right, that is the latest version. Of Kubernetes as we know as of now. So you know, you know you are more up to date than even the guy who is what we so thank you so much for that. I think it makes a lot of sense. So I don't know if anyone has you know questions you want to ask.